Hello everybody, Naughty Nana Dice. How's everybody today? We are in our third abode since the fire. And I'm just wondering how you're doing on this weekend. I hope it's going well. Mine's going okay. Hubby's gone out to get groceries with my son. I'm drinking water. I need something to wet my whistle. This is going to be a little long. I'm just warning you ahead of time. Um, there was a song that Tracy Lawrence wrote and it came out and it was released in 1994 and it was called If the World Had a Front Porch. Now, the chorus to that song is if the world had a front porch like we had back then, we'd still have our problems, but we'd all be friends. Treating your neighbor like he's, uh, like he's your next of kin wouldn't be gone with the wind if the world had a front porch like we did back then. Now, before I get into this, I just want everybody to either resubscribe or subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. Ring-a-ling, the little ding-a-ling, and you know when I'm coming because most people like to be warned when I'm coming, just saying, especially those Republicans. So anyway, what I want to talk about is um, how that song rings true today. Right? Um... If Trump gets back into the United States, he's going to demolish it. He will demolish the United States. Before he decided to run, even back in 2014, he and Melania were going on different uh, TV shows. Um, there was one interview with Joy Behar and Melania going on about Trump's uh, Obama's birth certificate saying that, well, I have my, I had to show my birth certificate, I had to show mine, why doesn't he show his? Because the people that voted and the people that did not vote for him, they want to know this. Well, because he was born in Hawaii, and it's not the same as her Slovenian birth certificate, it's a birth certificate nonetheless, because that's the way that state does things. She couldn't get that through her thick Slovovian head. Just saying. So that pissed me off when I watched that interview. I was I was angry. But, um, yeah, spouting the, the birther bullshit left, right, and center. But it went even further back than that. It was when Obama was running that things started going a little off the beaten path, shall we say. In 2010, there was a billboard in Southgate, California that read, Where's the birth certificate? That was two years after, let's see, he ran 2008, so that was 2010. Now, Republicans, with both strong right-wing and political knowledge, also have strong right-wing racial resentment. Plain and simple. Now, one theory was that he couldn't run for president because he held a dual citizenship, British and American. Completely not true. He was born in Hawaii. Just saying. So he was born in a state of the United States. So, yeah, if that was the case, then Ted Cruz shouldn't have been able to run for president either because at the time, he held a dual citizenship with, oh, sweet suffering Jesus, as my grandmother used to say, oh, God bless us and save us. He was a uh, citizen of Canada because he was born in my country, our country, who's ever listening, born in Canada, to an American mom, but still born in Canada. But he took a lot of heat for that, so he finally denounced us. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Bless his heart. So anyway, um, none of the white people were screaming about him having a dual citizenship. None of them were screaming about that, but they didn't mind screaming about saying Obama had a dual citizenship and he didn't buy constitutional law uh, he was not allowed to run. There wasn't so many black people saying that, just saying. Now Kamala Harris is getting the Obama treatment. She's not an American. Where's her birth certificate? The dog whistles will follow from, they followed her all the way through from when she was a prosecutor up until VP and into her presidency, and it will go beyond that. Ever since Joe Biden picked her as his running mate, the least experienced and knowledgeable were crawling out from under the woodwork to assume that she wasn't worthy, intelligent, or experienced enough. She 
is the most unqualified ever to run for government office, let alone for president. Or how about this one? Um, this makes me want to puke, actually. Uh, she was only picked because she is um, on the rise because she is, un, um, she is unqualified, inexperienced, and she's a diversity pick. Yeah. Swallow hard on that one. Uh, the woman is not capable or qualified to handle nuclear codes. Newsmax, July 26 this year. She never got, she never gotten a real job in her life. That blonde thing from Fox there. I don't know if that was the fifth place finisher in the swim meet or whatever the hell that was. Um, here's another one. She's not capable of leading the country. Maggoty Trader Peen. Like she's an example. I think she's a DEI hire. Harriet Hagman. That's the one that beat Liz Cheney uh, in Wyoming. Have you seen her? That's a piece of work. She is completely obsessed with identity over actual competence, experience, or results. Some guest Fox had on there. Uh, she is unqualified to be our commander-in-chief. Tulsi Trader Gabbard. Sure, comrade Tulsi. After you're done kissing Trump's ass, can we have a word? Newt Gingrich. She's not ready. She's not ready. Well, they spew this shit like molten lava shooting out their arse. Now, she said, uh, um, with that said, it was uh, such a conviction that it might be true, right? She's not ready. All that stuff, they pound that home. Like, Ooh, she's not capable. She's inexperienced. She hasn't been around long enough. Um, not even a little bit. Either these people did not pay attention to their civics classes or... They know better, and this is the worst part, but the money's too good on the right-wing uh, agenda with Heritage paying these people's millions of dollars, and they can't pass that up. They know it's wrong, but they'll spew it anyway. A little bit of power is just a little bit of power, and it only lasts a little bit of time before everything catches up. Most people who run for president have had some government experience. JFK spent 13 years in the... Uh, in the House of Representatives and the Senate before he became president. Worked away, but his whole family was involved in politics, even though they, some of them were bootleggers back in the day. Ronald Reagan was an actor. Well, he was even better than Trump because Trump did a, a show that was written all around him for him by most of it, and he just spewed words on a page, that's all. But um, Ronald Reagan uh, was a governor California for eight years. So he had eight years of government experience and some red tape that he got to see how that works. He served two terms. Uh, Obama served as a state senator and then as a U.S. senator for a total of 11 years of government experience. Plus he's a lawyer and all the rest of the stuff. So, so he's been around the block. Then there was the mango moose knuckle who had a grand total of exactly zero Backing years in any office, anywhere. You wouldn't even be qualified for dog catcher. God help the dogs. And it never, ever happened in U.S. history where a presidential nominee had either never served in the military or ever held office. Never, ever has it ever happened in U.S. history. Anybody that's ever been the presidential nominee has either been a service member or serve their country and government. Not the mango moose knuckle. Cowards don't join the military. So Kamala has more experience holding government office than all three of Kennedy and uh, Reagan and moose knuckle and Obama. She was a prosecutor and then she worked her way up to the assistant district attorney. Then she decided to run and when she was serving the people of San Francisco, she went on to get elected, elected as the district attorney and served there for a number of years. Then she was elected to the attorney general of California. See, she was elected. People voted for her because she had experience. She had knowledge and she was capable. Like she, do you think district attorney people would have said, oh, no, we've seen her record for DA. There's no way we're going to vote for her 
for attorney general. No, they voted in droves for her, yes. And she won her seat as a senator as well. And then uh, she also ran for president and she was in the same uh, lineup at the um, debates as Joe Biden was. But Joe Biden picked her to be his running mate and they were also elected to run the country together. So her total experience from being a prosecutor to being VP and now running for president is over 34 years of experience and capability. Yes. So Harris is running for the top job of the land, President of the United States of America, and she has not ever lost any of her elections. And oh no, you don't get to count 2019 when she suspended her account. You don't get to do that because she saw the writing on the wall because she had the knowledge and the capability to see what, light, uh, what was lying ahead. And she knew no matter how much money they tried to spend, she wasn't gonna get elected. She knew that, but it wasn't because of her experience or capability. It was because the writing was on the wall, so to speak, for it was a toss up between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. So because she saw the writing on the wall, there was like 13, 14 candidates in that race. And her voice was not heard on the national debate stage because there was too many of them. And they had to hold debates over two and three days. So, um, but neither was Amy Klobuchar or Elizabeth Warren or Pete Buttigieg. None of them were heard either. Pete Buttigieg went a little further than the rest, but you get where I'm going there. Look where they are today. So just because Kamala is not incredibly thirsty for the spotlight, like the mango moose knuckle, does not mean that she is not working with other countries to stem the flow of migrants coming into the United States, working on ways to get Putin out of Ukraine, and trying to get a peace deal done between Israel and Palestine and the Palestinian people. She's working really tough on that. And everybody's going, well, she's slowed down on the campaigning. Well, because she's vice president of the United States and she's got other duties she has to do. Tim uh, Waltz and a bunch of other folks are stepping in just fine and getting the word out. So, excusez-moi. So anyway, she's still vice president of the country and she has a duty to fulfill that obligation to the people, as well as campaign for and win the 2024 election. And while being a biracial female, I might add, but sure, she's inexperienced, incapable, and incompetent. Go figure. So this is the new digs for the next two, hopefully, well, at least three weeks anyway, till the 30th before we either stay here some more or move on. Not sure of anything. This is just the first full day we're in here. Anyway, Naughty Nana loves you. Be good, be safe. Please take care of you first so you can take care of somebody else. I love you so much. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry I'm missing days here and there, but that's going to happen with all the stuff that's going on up here. <laughs> Just saying. Mm -hmm. I love you so much. And please, don't forget, take care of you first.